Fantastic Comics takes an in-depth look at Garth Dennis and Steve Dillon's The Preacher. My other question to you, Jeff, is this. Is that why you've been reading Preacher? Yes. Preacher Man. All right. Preacher, everybody. Uh, for anybody that has never read Preacher, I'm going to give you a little rundown on what that book is. That's me. It's, that's you. Uh, Vertigo started in the middle of Sandman. It started in the middle of Hellblazer, Swamp Thing, and a few other books. Shade the Changing Man. Actually, the first Vertigo book was Death, The High Cost of Living, which is a three-issue miniseries. But that's not important. Bacalo? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he did the artwork, Bacalo, um, or Bacalo, whatever the hell. <laughs> um, Neil Gaiman obviously wrote that. Let me share the screen. Sorry, guys. Those would have been in that bag that I left you. What's that? The High Cost of Living. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Preacher. This was probably the second, um, the second wave of Vertigo books. Did they and all have was, Glenn Fabry covers? All of the Preacher comic books do, yes. Yep. So here's a Fabry. Fabry. And that's a uh, topic we wanted to talk about. Yeah, Cover we do. artists. So um, I think, yeah, we might as well go to that one right now. Image or image, whoops. Uh, Vertigo would often have a specific, yeah, this was I'm old. They would often have a specific cover artist going on for the book. So let's see. Uh, we have it was a nice way to tie the whole series together, yeah. So Dave Johnson did 100 Bullets, even though he wasn't the uh, artist on the inside, as Eduardo Rizzo. Oh, but Eduardo Rizzo did basically the run of the series yeah he did the entire run so, so that was kind of like so a theme good. you're going to see in the 100 or in uh, vertigo books so sandman dave mckeon he did well except for in this situation he did all the art for the covers there was always a rotating artist in this series yeah they did an artist per arc yeah basically. per arc uh, for the first part of Shade the Changing Man, we But had... it was still, it was all very, it, it felt like very uh, predetermined. Like yeah, they I were like, here's our cover He wasn't artist. just running to get any artist filling in. Right. It, was exactly. it wasn't, you know, like the, the seventh issue yeah, of a Marvel comic. it was art comic. directed, exactly. Uh, Brendan McCarthy did Shade the Changing Man. Bachala was the artist on that one. Uh, there's another one just to show you another cool one. He does really trippy stuff. He also worked with Milligan quite a bit, uh, Brendan McCarthy. So that's just to give you an idea. So going back to Preacher, Preacher was written by Garth Ennis with art by Steve Dillon. Fabry did the covers. Um, let me see. what. It, oh, yeah. They go on to do... So they originally did Hellblazer together. That's where Garth Ennis pretty much got his start in America. He was working on Hellblazer, and I personally think those are the best uh, Hellblazer issues you can read, or Garth Ennis ones. Hmm. They later go on to do Punisher. Look at that shot. Bam. Bam. Come I, back, Frank. Did he survive? Steve, did that guy survive? I don't think that one did. Uh, most of the people in Welcome Back, Frank, or any of the Punishers that Garth Ennis writes, uh, usually they die. He and they looks die so good. mad. Doesn't he look yeah. angry? It's funny because, you know, Steve Dillon has a very kind of simple style, and it's almost cartoony. Uh, the the visuals in Preacher were like the first time I saw a gunshot take someone's face off. And it's like yeah. little pieces of flesh kind of hang. It's, it's still kind of comical. Yeah. very, like, exploitation. Like, it's 70s exploitation. It's very Quentin Tarantino. Mm. It's very, like, pulp. It's super pulpy, this whole story, where like everything is so extreme. Everything is, you know, it's that kind of exploita exploitation cinema where the violence is in crazy over the top. The depravity is over the top. When characters are like sickos, they are completely degraded, depraved psychos like everything is just completely extreme so you're never confused about who the bad guy is well i mean there's never any good guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's got to be one good guy in preacher 
not yet. <laughs> not yet. So, Jeff, you've read this entirely before, right? I don't know if I ever read it all the way to the end before. Uh-huh. Like, I, I think I may have run out of gas the last time. So how many issues or how many trades? Do I've you definitely think read all now? this before. Like I, I'm up to volume six right now. I just started volume six. Uh, and like, yes, I haven't read this in 20 years, but I have read it. Wow. I, I've i probably only read it 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't it remember it clearly. I just remember it a little bit. <laughs> so let me take you on. Let me, let me try and remind myself with all of you who what, what preacher is about you find out that an angel and a demon from hell mated and had an offspring right correct uh we're going to call it the word of god right it was now. illegal illegal right angels and demons are not allowed to fuck. so we have jesse custer but who's they fucked. A min- who's and a then preacher. okay so they fucked and then this Thing was born but it was right. like an un it had no mind of its own it was just pure pure inf- information and power right and then it came to earth like so preacher jesse coster he um he is at his lowest point with his congregation he's a drunk he had a fight the night before with somebody and his entire congregation burns up in front of him well, he had a fight, right, exactly. He had a fight the night before by because he was calling out a bunch of shit heels in a bar. Where uh, he was and drinking. They, right, exactly. <laughs> and they had a huge brawl, and so everybody heard about it. So the next morning, like, everybody showed up. Like, the church was full to capacity. Like, nobody ever usually came because he was a shitty preacher. Yeah. Uh, but this day, everyone came because they were like, hey, this is the guy who like called out everyone and got into a fist fight <laughs> with six dudes last night. And uh, they all showed up and then they all got killed. <laughs> well, that's what they get for showing up for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, exactly. if it, and if that, gonna, if that is exactly the type of message. Like, that's what this book is about that type awesome. of thing i'd probably so this enjoy offspring it. of an, an angel and a demon enters jesse custer's body the preacher through right, for whatever through what? for whatever reason it when it, it gets loose heaven. of its prison where the angels were keeping it prison prisoner it flies straight into his brain and right. kind of nests there and, and he can uh, use and and what happens is he he has this one part where he's like he tells somebody to go f themselves, and that person literally tries or a- ends up doing that to themselves. All right, and here's the thing that I find completely <laughs> unrealistic because <laughs> go on, there's just no way, uh, no matter how, and I I'm gonna. Pardon my French here. No matter how erect you manage to uh, <laughs> become, I don't think you could possibly rip that erection off and have it maintain its, it's rigidity a, to the point where you could insert it into freeze yourself. Freeze it. I guess you would have to freeze it, but that was oh, what about flash, like, uh, flash uh, freeze, <laughs> flash freeze, and then ping with a hammer and go oh, to town. Rigor mortis doesn't that set in or something like that? Not until you're dead. He was Not still to- alive. Oh, I meant the penis rig- rigor mortis. No, no, I don't know, no, man. I don't know. It doesn't have its own separate rigor mortis once you've ripped it off. It of would the lose box. all of its blood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Basically, what I'm saying is this whole book is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But that's so, like, yeah, that's the thing. So uh, <laughs> with his friends Tulip and Cassidy, they go off on a hunt to try and make God answer for all that's done. That's been done, basically everything. Yeah, he's yeah. like. Yeah, he's a what you find out, and what he's you find let... out is that the, when they when they capture this uh, offspring of angel and demon fornication, they put it in prison, and exactly at that time, God 
basically uh, grabbed his suitcase and was like, I'm out and left heaven. I'm out. And uh, okay. Seattle back to Seattle, as they say. Now the, 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 pro, the antagonists of this story are uh, air star, right? Air star. Sure. This guy's like, What's, what's he? He's working for the church. Is that what's going no, on? No, no. I can't a, remember. It's like a secret <laughs> I, uh, Catholic mythological cabal. It's, okay. It's like so they yeah. are the uh, they're protecting the bloodline of Jesus. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, who hold did on. not die on the crucifixion. So he the bloodline of Jesus is this guy yeah, right he here. He did not. He did not die. He ATM. was crucified, but huh. they faked his death. Then they got him down off the cross, scooped him out of the tomb, and uh, scurried him away to wherever, where he had a wife and kids and, and family. And then they kept that bloodline pure for you mean thousands inbred. of years. Got what it. do you think yeah. about this guy in front of you right now? Inbred, yeah. yeah I get yeah, it. That's <laughs> I get it. Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's Cassidy right there. Nice Glenn Favory piece. Yeah. The Saint of Killers. Cassidy, we just breeze over it. He's a vampire. Yeah. Oh, no big deal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a vampire. Here, let me get you this cool picture of him. There's Vampires are very in in the 90s. Yes, and, like, there's were. a whole bunch of... Yes, they uh, were. There's a whole, there's already been several Cassidy storylines that have riffed on Anne Rice. Yeah. Do you and remember I'm, again? You remember Jihad? I just started volume six. Oh, I remember Jihad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same guy that invented magic. Uh, Invite, yeah. Invented Garfield. Jihad, the card game based on Vampire the Master. Richard, yeah, Richard Garfield or whatever his name is. They had a change. They had a well, change. See the, the same name guy who Jihad. invented uh, Vampire, though. Yeah, yeah. it's because they had to no. they had to get rid of Jihad as the name. No, so he was a different guy. No, it's all the same. He didn't create. He didn't create the mythos of Vampire uh, the Masquerade. That was a role playing game, and then yeah, it was a card game based yeah. on the mythos. Years later, after Vampire had already been around for a while, and then Magic yeah. became a thing, and yeah. everyone that had a role playing game was like, "Did you ever uh, play Jihad?" And nobody knew why how. Why yeah, aren't we that. making cards? Why aren't we making cards? Okay, <laughs> so the Saint of Killers, he is. What he 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 comes from he, like God has basically sent him to hunt down Jesse, right? Is that what's going on? No, but, is he a crazy? <laughs> I, no, I, no, okay, God stop, please stop. <laughs> you you to gotta it. let Jeff tell the story because I don't think I don't you know the story it's too much. This guy, this is just some guy. He's a, like has to do with Garth Ennis uh, masturbating over the uh, Western Western stories. He loves Western so hard. And what's more hard mm -hmm. than a hard, nameless killer who just kills everyone in sight all day, forever, for eternity. And then he killed so many people for so hard that the angel of death himself asked him to take over his job and keep killing forever for no end until eternity. And how badass is that? Love Garth Ennis. That dude has wow. like endless supply of bullets. I, yeah, it's so badass and hardcore and 90s and extreme and awesome and deadly. Yeah. It's yes. great. I yeah. love it. Guns, that dude shot the hell out of people. Guns forever. Bang, bang. If you're into that kind of thing. Bang, bang. Oh yeah, he's also unstoppable. I mean, he's uh, sure because he's the angel of death now. Because yeah. the angel of death gave him his job, yeah. And so, then he this murdered the devil in hell on. because he's such a badass. So these are the people that are coming after Jesse and his friends. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. I'm having a hard time. He, he's binging it. it also, so it's totally not fair. I guess. I guess. Fine. But here's the Fine. problem. Sorry. Garth Ennis is guilty of one of my least favorite things, which is wanting to have your cake and eat it too, which it shouldn't, mm, it seems like, good. it seems like that's the obvious thing. If you have cake, the only thing you should want to do is eat it. Yum. But in this case, I'm speaking metaphorically. Uh, and like he, 
wants to, he's doing this great critique of America and Americana and what it means to do all of these super American things. And this is a fucking ferner, by the way. A ferner. This is Northern Ireland. Irish interview on what it's about to be American. Some queen fucking proddy that I don't (laughs) care about personally. Uh, Hey, don't knock the queen. Anyway, he's out here. He's trying to make fun of all these American tropes. And like, he's clearly what he would uh, probably call taking the piss. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But he's also loving it. Yeah. Like his main character is like, I don't know. He's just playing both sides of the field in a way that I don't like. Can like you explain he, he, that? Because I don't understand what you mean when you say have his cake and eat it too and you don't like it. What's he doing specifically that you don't like? He's criticizing a thing that he's engaging in and also like like nudgingly winking saying this is cool. Like, okay, uh, ultra violence or whatever. He's critical of it. He's critical of of this hyper toxic masculinity, but at the same time, he's winkingly nudgingly saying, I also think it's cool. Like okay. that's the subtext. Yep. All right. I get you. He's constantly having he's doing his... it with a lot of different things. I take it. You said yeah, he loves he Westerns and he's got like super stereotypical, yeah. hyper violent Westerns. And he's also got, uh, the Duke involved. We need to get a uh, John John formative dance the Duke? from you. John Wayne. John Wayne. John Wayne. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. The Duke's in it. Um, Duke City. That's where I live. He's the hallucination. He is. Uh, that, which is very Tarantino again. You know, yes. like he used Elvis. Oh, this Elvis. whole thing is very Tarantino. It's all so 90s. It's like so. All right. Here. I remember. All right. So extreme. Zippo lighters were really popular oh. in the comic store. Oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, Comic yeah. Relief would have the, the Zippo spinner. I remember. And they were like Conan and milk and cheese and yeah, double boy. But what they didn't have is anything cool like a uh, Superman symbol. <laughs> or even better than that. In Preacher, there is a lighter that Jesse walks around with. And what does it say on it? It says, fuck communism. That's right. <laughs> That's and I have right. to say, fuck that. I, I wanted communism. that, but but no, seriously, wouldn't that have been at no. the height of when we were selling preacher, <laughs> been able to sell to all our smoking people and ourselves? We already know. We already know comics industry is out of their mind. Okay, we know that because, for example, that, but also DC won't do that. Oh, they won't put yeah. themselves on a lighter. No, they wouldn't. Good. Yeah, I appreciate that. But it was pretty smart. I mean, it would have been a smart way to go. But like, okay, so that's the other thing is like, it's satirical while embracing the thing that it's satirical of. That's what I'm trying to say. And I, I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't write down a bunch of good examples of it. But no, that's fine. That's fine. If you read it, you will totally see what I'm saying. I think I'm getting the. I think like, I'm getting the gist. Obvious. He's like, right. and he's. And it's cartoonish. Like, all of the stuff is very cartoonish. Like, he's literally lighting a cigarette every second. Like, yeah. there's a scene where he comes out of a trance. Like, he's got a huge fucking python around his neck, and he's in a voodoo trance. And, like, he comes out of the trance in the middle of this gunfight between all these other people, and he's... Yeah lighting a cigarette in the next panel after he wakes up he's lighting a cigarette with his zippo lighter like in between right. uh when he's about to punch somebody in the face or something shoot their nuts didn't off he or, at one point i'm sure he's gonna like it's not gonna be too long before he literally pulls someone's testicles out because like uh. it's just like they're, they're having a hard time now elevating you know heightening escalating yeah exactly yeah. Like there's the party where everyone's fucking an animal and like just it's an orgy of the human animal dope shooting orgy. You know, it's just like this is volume three. Where are you going? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. How many volumes are there total? Nine. 
And how Usually many the smaller ones? How many are you selling? Smaller, I'm reading the old ones, and that's why I'm going to be selling them all because they're not worth anything anymore. Because nobody yeah. wants these. Not yeah, these sure. versions. Though. Everyone wants the ones that are two in one. Two, two in two one. Two in one. Two in one. Ah, okay. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Preacher so far. I will say that it, like, it's getting, like, the parody aspects of it are getting uh, more entertaining. As I go on, I think because I'm getting maybe a bit numbed to the <laughs> ludicrous nature of all the yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, I'll, I'll one... check back in, uh, in with you. The next time I talk to you, I'm sure I'll have read the rest of them. The one thing right. about Preacher is that it is obviously, again, we have a, a, a Euro writing an Americana piece of... <laughs> Of a, a graphic novel literature, yeah, it's all about the American South. Right. It's about Jesus. Although, did you it, know there it's, was it's more about down Catholicism there? than it is about real Southern that's uh, true. Christianity? That's well, no, because uh, there's the flashback story about how Jesse's raised by his grandmother, that's true. and let me tell you, that's she true. is French. a piece of work. They're French, and so they are Catholic. And so that is true. So his whole background is Catholic. Yeah. And all of the mythology of the, I was going to say show. I never watched the show, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but all of the mythology background of the series is Catholic mythology, which that was I'm also, all, I'm, I'm, all, I'm also like, I've been steeped in that since I'm a child. And then, so like I got into Catholic a uh, conspiracy theory of this Fun. type that, yeah. that they're trafficking in. Yeah. I got into that when I was a teenager. You so like, like Dan Brown? Even the yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, before Dan Brown was Dan ever Rice. writing stuff, yeah. I was into uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, mm. which is you know. I only read another fiction that gets shelved in nonfiction. <laughs> it has a lot of Catholicism stuff. Wait, what? Another roadside attraction. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. That. Yeah, uh, it was also it was big uh, at that time. Robert Anton Wilson's Illuminatus stuff. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. those are. Fun. Uh, the other thing about Preacher is that it is a Western being told. It's a modern day Western story. Uh, when you get to the end, you'll be like, "Oh, that's." Very, I mean, some people don't like it. I say, well, you know, you can't accept the fact that it's been this way all this time and then have a problem with it at the end. But, you know. Are you telling me that he's going to ride off, slumped off in the saddle and somebody's going to be I think there's going to sunset. Jesse! Let's just say there's Jesse! a sunset. Yeah, exactly. Isn't there, <laughs> isn't there a part where he's like battling lung cancer? No, that was Hellblazer. Hellblazer. And That's that was Hellblazer. Garth okay. Ennis' first story. He, on the first issue... At the end, you find out that John Constantine has lung cancer mm. and he's going to die. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, what? And I guess Garth Ennis is a very serious hater of smoking. Yeah, well. Which is funny because he got really popular doing Hellblazer. And after John Constantine and also, figures out a way to win, and he in, still smokes. In Preacher, uh, everyone fucking smokes nonstop. Oh, yeah. I, can, I couldn't watch yeah, Mad Man because of that. Well, actually, I don't know if Cassidy smokes. I'm sure he does. He definitely drinks. He definitely drinks. drinks. Uh, but, yeah, they definitely both smoke nonstop. Yeah. Which is in line with his M.O. of going over the top with everything in order to make fun of it or make it disgusting. Yeah. Right. And also of being uh, uber 90s where yeah. everyone was smoking always. Without like, a doubt. It was just. For I mean, for me personally, it was a well. I, I just substitute for having to have a personal character. Oh yeah, yeah without yeah, a doubt. Sure. Oh, yeah. also, <laughs> I could leave a situation and go smoke, so that was kind of cool. It was like getting a private break every hour, you know, that non-smokers just There's didn't. No get. reason to leave the store if I'm not Sorry. smoking a cigarette. I, I gotta go take a cigarette break. They should have taken those out of our pay is what they should have done. <laughs> <laughs> they should have given them if, given them as a, as a raise. As, so everybody as that didn't smoke? Do you smoke? Oh, okay. 
You're going to take breaks yeah. a lot, so I'm going to give this guy more money because he does not. That's <laughs> that's incentive to quit right there. Well, so is lung cancer. Yeah. Well, I don't, uh, here's the FCC censoring smoking. I don't know if it's as much as that, but... Uh, the federal you know, the whole communication the, 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 commission? They've been working on the youth of America for a long time. The war on drugs. Adver- advertisements. I remember when I did smoke cigarettes and one of those would come on my program. The first thing we do is light up a cigarette. Well, time to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> oh, the one where the, the, the ciggies are, are raining from the sky. And it's like, oh, what a dream that would have been. <laughs> that doesn't sound bad at all. No, I hate smoking. Boo. I'm glad I quit. Everyone was smoking on Johnny Carson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had the Pope on one time, and that dude was had a cigar. So what? Everyone was smoking on Mike Douglas. He wasn't Oh, cool. yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So, Preacher... As of we're as we're going right now, what do you think of it? You, you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm, you just keep going on. I'm on the fence. I have to see where it's. I have to see where we end up with certain of where we end up with Jesse. Uh, 